essays have appeared in Plowshares, Michigan Quarterly Review, Boulevard, The Seattle Review, and other publications. He's currently working on a book of short stories and a novel. I can't wait to hear you. Please welcome him. Thank you. I've enjoyed all these readings that have just been really, they've been just really great. And it's just to kind of echo what Mary Helen said before, it's just whenever I hear Sasha talk, I always feel like I've learned something, um, which I think puts a lot of pressure on her. <laughs> um, this, is a, this is a brand new piece, so who knows? Um, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is called Ghosts of Electricity, now. Maybe it's gonna be called something else later. I met Bob Dylan in November 1969 at the Casa Luna, a low-end hotel in Austin. This is after his protest singing days in Greenwich Village, after he went electric at Newport and toured the world to heckles and death threats, after his motorcycle accident that broke his neck. I didn't know his history at the time. Information wasn't readily available, not like today. And in any case, the folk scene never interested me. I've been traveling from San Diego to New York by bus with a stopover in Austin. My vision of Texas came from movies, from a land of John Wayne, deserts, cactus, and heat, and I packed accordingly, thinking I would pick up a coat um, as I made my way east. When a cold front swept through Texas, I found myself ill-prepared to meet it, shivering in, in the unheated bus, stepping out at rest stops into winds that reached under my clothes and chilled my flesh. I tried tucking my hands under my armpits for warmth. As a, bus drove, uh, as a bus drove through flat and desolate plains, I would slip from my body and float free. By the, time, by the time I stumbled upon a hotel in Austin, my throat itched and my skin felt flushed and I knew my future. As soon as I closed the door to my room, I tossed off my clothes and crawled under the sheets and slept like the dead. Music woke me. Drunks shouting Fats Domino, fat dom, fats domino lyrics with what sounded like a full band. Occasionally they lost track of the words and broke up laughing, while the barrel house piano continued to charge forward, waiting for no man. Someone kept calling for more beers. I sandwiched my head between a pillow, but Fats Domino turned to Little Richard, to Chuck Berry, and finally I slid open the blind to glare at the revelers. At least 20 people were celebrating what looked like a birthday, complete with cake, balloons, and kegs of beers, I checked my watch, 11 o'clock. Surely it would end soon. It was a hotel, there were rules. Then, shouts of greeting for new arrivals, the squeal of guitars plugged in, and I realized this impromptu, impromptu concert would never, ever end. The old man, the old me, sorry, uh, the old me, the pre-military, pre uran me, might have endured it, but I'd been through enough. So, cursing and sweating, aflame with fever, I swaddled the, bran the blanket around my underwear-clad body and stumbled downstairs, sandals slapping my heels. And at the bottom of the staircase, I ran smack into Hayes. He was an older African-American gentleman in a cream-colored suit. Because he was better dressed than everyone else, I assumed he was in charge. Ordinarily, his age and poise would give me pause, but I was exhausted feverish, and I laid into him immediately, babbling about how some of us, God help me, were trying to sleep, and could he turn off this damn music? It was late, and a damn hotel. This is America. I fought, that's right, I fought to have some goddamn peace and goddamn quiet, and you wouldn't believe what I went through, and I can't take anymore, and please, for God's sake, stop it. Please stop. I was almost weeping by the end. Hayes nodded and told me he understood, and he'd see what he could do. But first a drink, he said, and then we addressed your concerns in order. I'm not sure what happened next. As far as I can tell, he performed a verbal, verbal jujitsu on me, because in a blink it was midnight, and the party had spread from the lobby to the stairs and the balconies. I'd been introduced to a few musicians, and they had given me more drinks. The music had shifted to swampy Chicago blues, Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, and my hotel room blanket had slipped off one shoulder, toga-like, and I felt momentarily alive as I danced with a strange woman who knew my name and was asking what part of Asia I was from. When I told her California, <laughs> she didn't appear to understand. Later, I found Hayes by the lip of the pool, staring down below. 
an isolated figure, something in his posture frightened me. For a second I thought he was poised to take a header into the empty pool. But a second later, he turned and grinned at me. Mr. Jack, he said, how are you doing? I told him how this was the craziest night I experienced in a long time. This happens most nights, he said, so I had that to look forward to. He told me the hotel owner had a soft spot for musicians. He and Hayes were good friends. They had been folklorists together 20 years earlier, capturing the call and response songs of field hands and convicts throughout the rural south before they, can, uh, before they could fade into history. Another group had come into the hotel with shouts of welcome, just as raucous as the previous ones. Who are they, I asked. The late shift, Hayes said, coming from last call. They all seemed to know each other. The moon slivered in the hazy night sky, and the noise muted into an echo. Far below, I could see the drained pool had an inch of silt, dirt, used cigarettes at the bottom, and a shiny, unidentified object. When I leaned over the edge to make it out, a, dis a dizziness crested over me, and I thought, how easy it would be. And I almost clutched Hay's arm to prevent myself from plunging in. The moment passed. I stepped back, Hayes never the wiser. A young man plucked his guitar and sang about how he would do anything in this great wide world if his lover would come home with him. Who's he, I asked. Hayes bared his teeth, our newly arrived celebrity. That's Bob Dylan. I examined the bearded man singing in a pinched voice to a girl sitting um, on the step below him. Hayes noticed my expression. You never heard of Bob Dylan? No, I confessed. Hayes laughed cruelly. You're all right, Jack. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't appreciate my ignorance pointed out to me. Later, I would realized I'd heard some of Bob Dylan's songs in training camp, even learned a few without knowing who wrote them. The songs felt fixed from another time. I would never guess they had been written recently, let alone by someone I could meet. I told myself it was worth staying away. Thank <laughs> you.